Hello and welcome to part one of a little video series I am doing on data structures. Today we will be covering stacks and queues. We will learn what they are, why they are useful, and how to implement them in JavaScript. So what are stacks and queues? Stacks and queues are collections. They are linear data structures with essentially the same meaning that they do in everyday life. So when you visualize a stack, you can think of a stack of plates. And when you visualize a queue, you can think of a line of people at a movie theater. When you have a stack, you can only add or remove things from the top of the stack. You wouldn't normally pull a plate from the middle of the stack or take from the bottom of the stack. It just makes sense to take from the top. If you've got your stack of plates, the last plate to go in the stack is the first plate to go out. So stacks are last in, first out. The only operations we are concerned about with a stack are to push or add to the stack, pop or remove from the stack, and peek, which is to just look at the last item in the stack without adding or removing it. One application of a stack in the real world is a text editor or a graphics editor's undo redo feature. Every time you do something, your actions will get added to an undo stack. And when you hit undo, those actions get popped from the stack and also pushed into a redo stack. A queue is very similar to a stack, but the primary difference between them is that stacks are last in, first out, while queues are first in, first out. Considering our line of people at the movie theater, you can always add more and more people to that queue, but the person at that front of the queue will always be the first person to leave, after which point the following people in line shuffle on forward. The first person in the queue is always the first person out. So first in, first out. The operations that queues work with are NQ, or adding to the queue, and DQ, which is removing from the queue. One application of a queue in the real world is a printer queue. So you can queue up multiple jobs for printing and the printer will process and print each of those jobs in the order it was given. We can actually implement stacks and queues with JavaScript's built-in array methods. So let's initialize our stack as an empty array. And remember the methods we want on our stack are push, pop and peak. So conveniently, push and pop are exactly the same as the JavaScript array prototype methods. So we can stack dot push a dog, cat, and a bear. And if we take a look at our stack, it's now got three animals in it. When we pop from the stack, it'll return the last item in the stack and remove that item. So stack.pop, we expect to return bear. And if we look at our stack, it should only have two items in it, dog and cat. Now, if we peek at our stack, it'll just show us the last item in our stack. So we would expect our peek method to return cat. Peek, however, is not actually a JavaScript array prototype method. So to look at the last item in the stack, we would simply access the stack at its last index. So that would be stack.length minus one. And that should show us our cat. So now let's implement the stack using JavaScript classes. So let's make a class stack with a constructor. And our constructor will have two properties. This.storage set to an empty object and this.size set to zero. And then we'll have our push, pop, and peak methods. Our push method will take an element and when we push into our stack, we will increase the size by one. So let's increment this.size and then we'll store that element in this.storage as a key value pair, with the key being the size and the value being the element itself. Now 
Now, when we pop from the stack, we want to return the last item in the stack and also remove it from the stack. So let's do a temporary variable that will store that removed item. So we'll let removed equal this.storage, this.size. And then we'll return removed. Now we should delete that actual item. So delete this.storage, this.size, and then we'll decrement the size. Finally, the peak method is simply returning this.storage, this.size. So now let's test our stack by creating a new one. And then let's push some things into the stack. Now let's take a look at our stack. We've got a stack object with the property of storage holding all of our elements. And we've also got the size property here. Now, if we pop from our stack, we're going to expect it to return bare. And if we look at our stack, it's only got dog and cat in it. Bear has been removed. And now finally, if we peek at our stack, we should just see the last element inside it, which would just be cat. Now let's look at how to implement a queue in JavaScript. It's very, very similar. Once again, let's just use the JavaScript array methods. So we'll const queue equal an empty array. And then remember the methods that we're concerned with for a queue are nq, onq, nq, and dq. Just a sidebar, there is another data structure called a deck, spelled like that. So don't confuse that with DQ. So recall that queues are first in, first out. So the equivalent JavaScript array methods for NQ and DQ respectively would be push and shift because push will add to the end of the array. I should probably point like this. Push will add to the end of your array and then shift will remove from the beginning of your array. So if we queue.push, let's do like an aquatic theme this time. A uh, seahorse, dolphin, whale shark. So now we've added three sea animals to our queue. And now we want to dequeue. And when we shift, we expect this to return the item that's at the front of our array. So that would be our seahorse. Now when we look at our queue again, all that's left are the dolphin and whale shark. And if we shift one more time, we expect this to return dolphin, the animal at the front of our queue. And then if we look at our queue again, only the whale shark is left. Now let's look at implementing the queue with JavaScript classes. So let's make a class queue constructor and this time we're going to keep track of this dot storage this dot head and this dot tail of course we've got our nq and dq methods when we nq Still don't know if it's pronounced NQ or ONQ. Earlier today I was building an app with my team and we didn't know whether it was pronounced Favicon or Favicon. It's just one of those things that like, you just try to not speak out loud. <laughs> with NQ we've got an element once again. So we're going to add elements to our queue storage through the tail. So we would have this.storage at this.tail equal the element and then we'll increment the tail. Once again with dq, much like the stack pop method, we want to return the removed element. So we'll do let, let remove equal this.storage, this.head this time, because we're removing from the front of our storage object. We're adding from the back, removing from the front. And then we're going to return removed. Let's delete 
this dot storage, this dot head, and then increment the head. So it moves forward one position. Finally, let's test our queue once again with const queue equals new queue. Let's unqueue some sea animals. And if we look at our queue, we've got a queue object with three sea animals in storage, a head at zero and a tail at three. Now, if we dequeue, we expect this to return the animal at the front of our queue. So we expect to see a seahorse. Let's look at our queue once more. The seahorse has been deleted and we now have storage with dolphin and whale shark and the head moved to position one. Let's DQ one more time. We expect to return dolphin. And if we look at the queue once more, we have one sea animal left in the queue. In summary, we learned that stacks and queues are both linear data structures. They're just collections of items with a very similar meaning to their real life counterparts. The primary difference between the stack and the queue is that stacks are last in, first out, while queues are first in, first out. We learned some common applications of stacks and queues in the real world. And finally, we looked at implementation of stacks and queues in JavaScript using the built-in array prototype methods and JavaScript classes. It is also certainly possible for stacks and queues to show up in technical interviews. So you should consider how these data structures might actually be useful in solving certain types of problems. There's this one interview problem where you're given an input of a string of parentheses and you have to determine if they're valid. So if you're given a string of parentheses, curly braces, and brackets, you can actually use a stack to determine whether all of those parentheses close each other in a valid way. As for queues, I think I have seen some problems where you implement a queue using two stacks, or you can use a queue in a stack to determine if a word is a palindrome. So it's certainly possible for these data structures to show up in toy problems. So it's really good to brush up on them. And that concludes today's video on stacks and queues. This is part of a little video series I am doing on data structures so please subscribe so you don't miss the next one and do leave a like if you thought this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.